has been, I think, the longest period of time between this episode and whatever happened before this one. It took about six months to return to the seat of the astronaut. So I hope you're still there. If you're not, I hope somebody new is around and we're going to do this anyway, so let's. In the last episode of the past season, because this is the beginning of a new one, we sort of ended up in a cliffhanger for no particular need. It was just something that I did or do all the time in the well-intentioned search to trying to find the clearest way to communicate something important. And we're going to solve any kind of mystery from that last episode in this one, but not in the conceptual way that the particular episode was dealing with. We're going to do it in whatever way we're going to do it, but we'll solve all those questions no matter what. I don't know if anybody has any questions or not, but I'm going to continue doing this as if this is going really, really well. Okay. This is the third season of The Astronaut Nature. This is the first episode of that season, and without any more delays, here we go. In the previous episode of The Astronaut Nature, I was sort of telling the story of a fictional character that, of course, it was me, dealing with a new app on my phone and with a newfound situation of having someone contacting me through this app that was supposed to be like a walkie-talkie type of thing. And this person, or whatever it was that was on the other side of this communication, was claiming to not be necessarily human. And that was the end of it. There was a moment when the connection was lost, and there was a lot of like, Are you there? Are you there? And the episode finished exactly at that point with the promise of continuity. What I was trying to do in that exercise of theatrical maneuvering was sort of moving the head of whomever was listening to the point of neutral understanding. What if we have someone coming from another planet, someone who doesn't have any other connection with us but what we understand as logical reasoning, because that's whatever it's supposed to be out there everywhere, anywhere. And why do I think that that's the case? Because that is the one layer of commonality that we might share with other intelligent beings on our level of intelligence, which is not better or worse than any other level. Simply a certain frequency that has to be matched. And that's it. Then communication is established. Why do I think that some sort of common sense or logical reasoning is the thing that connects us? Because we didn't create that, we didn't invent that thing, we found it here, and it's the thing that is always there suggesting points like, I don't necessarily believe in that, or I need to make an effort to believe in that, or, you know, yeah, that's exactly it. And man, we have diluted so much that thing that now we need to sort of embrace a level of a certain intuitive thinking or whatever it in order to justify so many contradictions, and we are doing that. What I am suggesting is something different. My proposal is pure and basic intelligence. It doesn't have to be more or less. If you can understand the complex thing that is right next to you, you are on its level or more. You call somebody a genius because you have what it takes to recognize and navigate that level. So, it takes one to know one, but not everybody wants to be there, and that's different. How many languages can you learn? If you know how to deal with one, then you already have the proof that you're capable of dealing with languages. You can learn as much as you want to. You can learn a lot motivated to do so. The idea of having someone from another dimension communicating with us in the fiction, of course, that we know of, it's a little bit of a cliché, but we are not escaping clichés here. We're using every freaking tool to get to some form of clarity. That's what we're going to do. All right, I'm taking a little break here. Don't go anywhere unless you need to. I will be with you in a second. What I did so far has to do with trying to place other minds in situations that don't cost a lot of effort to either imagine or simply accept as possible because it's entertaining value or because it's very interesting content and not really struggling for originality. 
I do believe that there is positive uniqueness in what I do because I haven't found it nowhere else, really. And now I will go for it without any more coding. Coding. To do not scare people and their whatever beliefs about. No more. Really. American Southern Accent Mode is now off. What? No. All right. Okay, that's fine. I guess we don't want to struggle with any cultural appropriation type of problem. But I have to say, computer, that was not as much of a Southern as it was a Midwestern kind of accent. Anyways. Who the heck cares? Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, What I was saying was that, in essence, most of the stuff that I do explain here, it is not that different from what people already know. Just the combination of factors around a subject, it was new in a way. Because I am saying it. That's the reason why it's unique. Of course, that's the only reason. But it has been said before. Maybe in different languages or fashions or who knows. I've been investigating, but I really couldn't find many people talking about this like this. However... Credit has to be given to the Kickstarter that sort of put everything in perspective in my life. That was a song. Yeah, it was a song. When I was a teenager, I found out about this band from the UK called Love and Rockets. The name of the band was inspired in a comic or graphic novel from the late 70s, early 80s. The band was the result of another bigger band called Bauhaus. People know that one. And of course, people know Tons and Tales, which is also a result of Bauhaus. But in any case, there is a song from Love and Rockets that it more than a song to me and it did change my idea of everything it changed my way of seeing things and it changed my way of interpreting things and it was the cause and the effect that over time became more and more intense I'm sure we all have some kind of memory of something that was consequential in our existence in my case like I said It was the song. After I heard what the song was saying in the lyrics, I realized that it was more than just poetry. It was something so radically simple and yet so transformational that since I heard that many, many years ago, it has never let me go. Once in a while, it pops up and associates itself, the message of the song, with whatever I'm experiencing at the point, especially with really hard moments in my life. So, yeah, the song is called No New Tell to Tell, and it probably tells the only story that you need to hear right now, because what it says in the beginning is enough for you to evaluate for a while. Because if you can understand the meaning of that, then the rest is an inner conversation with the possibilities of that very same thing. And the whole dynamic changes and you're going to have questions like why this is no more universally known or why the question is not in everybody's mind. Because the message has in itself the potential to change everything. The understanding of the message is what really creates the change. The song says this. You cannot go against nature because when you do go against nature, it's part of nature too. Really undeniable. Simply undeniable. So digest that a little. And I'm going to go for another break right now. Okay, we already have two seasons of the afternoon nature with maybe different length or whatnot, but definitely with good enough information already, if you know what I mean. It is time to consolidate and take a stand so we can evolve this message once and for all. Therefore, I'm going to say it as clearly as I intellectually can. Everybody wants to live for as long as possible in a young, attractive, biological presence. And there is no reason for that to not be a reality, except for the fact that it doesn't happen. 
And that's not even a good relevant point for us to stop trying. That's why we keep trying. <laughs> Usually people tell you about acceptance and adaptation and not fear of death and whatever as they are freaking out with the aging part and all that. They put in their bodies as much weirdness and collagen or BS as they can afford while they are preaching exactly the opposite of all that. That's good. That's okay, everybody has their own way to deal with those circumstances. But we really want to be here for a while, or at least something that we find here wants to do that through us. Because when we got here, we didn't bring anything. Remember? Nothing. You don't remember nothing. So yeah, we find these desires here, and these desires are so incredibly strong. And I want to tell you exactly what I desire and what I want from my perception of these kind of things. I'm planning on not dying for as long as I really want to live. If I find myself bored with this particular set of circumstances, I would like to transcend to another dimension. Maybe through a portal or through some gentle way to do that. Whatever it is that is not related to nasty oblivion. Just to a different landscape, maybe. Maybe something very simple. I'm not planning on dying. I'm not planning on aging. I want to be the summary of everything that I like physically, spiritually, mentally, and since every mood is just a bunch of different humors combined, I will not have any problems with forgetting stuff, people, circumstances, whatever. <laughs> stuff that I have to forget. And I will not have any problems in doing what is needed when it comes to conjuring mindset and whatever facilitates my staying here for as long as I want to. There should be no a problem with that and I know it's possible because I'm saying that and I didn't invent that particular talking point or theory or anything like that. Using the intelligence that I call mine, or the one piece of intelligence that is provided by nature that I can use, I came up with this conclusion. So at the same time, nature did, right? Because that's where it came from. And I want to be respectful with that. And I don't mind the contradiction. I don't mind being proved wrong. I'm okay with that. If I'm wrong about any of this, at any point, I will say, that's fine. I will accept my mistake and I will continue recognizing that yes, this is what's happening, but I had a better idea and I don't know where that idea came from, but it wants to continue being that good idea. That's why I keep finding that idea in my perceptional intellectual system. Um, so I don't know how much of a sacrilege shit statement this thing is, but that's what I think. That's what I'm planning on doing. Not dying, not getting old, or not turning into a piece of shit. Trying to avoid any other form of unnecessary train of thought because I don't like conflict after knowing what I know and knowing what I want, I don't need the conflict anymore. If you didn't have the problem of aging and dying, we probably could be or, 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 or concerned with our lives, with our experiences, than we are concerned with other people's lives and behaviors and all that on the planet. And by concerning ourselves with our experience, we'll be influencing for good everything else because we are a version of everything else. And we are selfish because there's no other thing than self. We also consider the fact that my nature or our nature is exactly like the other person in the biological type of purpose. And whatever you do that is good for you, that is beneficial for you, will be beneficial for the rest. That's what's happening here. And if you really consider yourself selfish, you will not create problems for yourself, meaning taking care of your strategic understanding and the only thing that you know, self. And from that point, you will be causing a good impact on everything else. So when you take good care of yourself, you will impact the rest of things that are related to your nature in an excellent way. It's like that, all right? All right. All right. So you will not be bad to other people because that create conflicts and that's not good for you. Um, you know that that will affect you, so you don't want that shit. That will create distraction. That will create 
a certain heaviness that you don't need. And that's really being selfish. You want to be light, fun, and happy. Otherwise, to do the other stuff, you need to be really bad or really evil in order to deal with that crap. And look what happened to all these motherfuckers that are doing that, giving a bad name to things like having money. Nobody gives a shit about that, you know? Nobody really wants to be rich or poor right now. Those are extremes that don't really fit with any of our wiring. So sooner or later they will disappear. Enough of that. Let's really do this in an honest way. Let's confess that we don't know what the fuck are we doing here. Where did we really come from? If we came from from somewhere? Or what is the dynamic of all this? How we got here? Etc. And let's keep asking from that particular point of honest and brilliant ignorance. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's the honest version of you. That's the honest version of me. The one that says, Why am I suffering when I think I had enough. We tend to justify and to honor the suffering and screw that. We sometimes get the point and that's all we need. The extra hangover, jack of pain, BS is sometimes too much and that should be a wake up call for everybody. Everybody should be like, why am I going through this? Why this thing has such a deep access to the most inner part of myself and I don't have one single word in the making process, I cannot say enough, I get it, you know, who are you? Are you the one that is just tolerating things or the one that says, if I had an off option for this pain, no matter how deep or holy or profound it might be on my mind, would I press that off button? Will I actively act on that possibility? Of course I will, of course you will. All right, that's it for this episode. I don't think there's anything else that I can say except for the fact that that's who you are. The one that will say enough if you had a chance. That's who you really are. And there's no one single problem with that because naturally that's who you are. And everything else that keeps you from being that thing is just something that you are free to question. If that is what you feel that you should do when the pain has been enough. Because the pain is just a message and you got it. Now, time to do something productive with the information of that message. All right, I will be talking to you soon. Hopefully, or maybe later, I don't know. We'll see. Guys, thank you for being there. And you know the thing that I always say? No, you don't, because I don't say a thing. So that's it. Bye. <laughs>